There's only 24 hours in a day I got a pair of earbuds and I wish there was a way that I could know just what I want to listen to There's 150,000 shows that I'm not sitting through When the world is dark and boring Let us do your exploring Welcome to Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasting because it's not your daddy's radio. We're your hosts. I'm Josh. And I'm Joel. This week we're going to be discussing Oh No, Ross and Carrie. It's a Max Fun show. Woohoo, Max Fun! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a great show, uh, but before we get to that, we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves in case you've stumbled upon this podcast by uh, accident. We're Pod on Pod. We review a different podcast every week for you to help you find your next favorite show. We think there's a tremendous amount of great content out there, and nobody's talking about all of it. More importantly, there's a tremendous amount of not good content. Ah, uh, this is also true. That's true. And most people don't have the time to wade through it. So what ends up happening is you just go, I, I'll just go to ESPN. I'll just go to NPR. And so you only listen to the things that you already are listening to anyway through traditional media. There's so much original stuff out there in the world of podcasting, and we like to highlight some of those things. Oh No, Ross and Carrie is the show that we're going to be discussing this week, and we'll break that show down with four criteria, audio quality, host likability, the production values, and then the content itself. We'll also give you some alternate names for the show and then round it all out by giving you an overall rating. Just like Siskel and Ebert gave a movie one thumb up, two thumbs up, no thumbs up, we're going to give this show earbuds in. That's right. So we'll start it off, though, by telling you a little bit about the show itself. Oh No, Ross and Carrie. It's the show where they don't just report on spirituality, fringe science, and the paranormal, but they actually show up and attend all of these sort of things themselves. They undergo alternative treatments. They partake in paranormal investigations. They even join different religions and uh, cults. It's a really interesting show. The idea is that they're, just like we're exposing you to new podcasts so that you don't have to, they're exposing you to all of these fringe things that maybe your aunt sent you a chain letter about and you wondered, that doesn't sound quite right. They're showing up so you don't have to. That's their tagline. Got anything to add there? No. All right. That's, that was a very thorough explanation. Excellent. All right. So the hosts are Ross Blocker. Blocker? Blosher? Sure. Okay. Ross Blocker and Carrie Poppy. Uh, and they're with the Max Fun mm. Network. The first episode, based on their experiences at the Kabbalah Center, was released in March of 2011. The show was independently distributed for a while, and then they joined the Maximum Fun Network in January of 2014, uh, so just earlier this year. And this is one of the ones that is generally a monthly podcast. Yeah. Occasionally, they'll do two in a month, but most of the time, it's like every four or five weeks, you get yeah. a new episode. And part of that is about- They have to do it. Yeah. They do a lot of research right. before they do the show, so they can only do so many. You can find out more, by the way, at onopodcast.com. There's also a show that heavily pushes listener donations. They did that even before they joined the Maximum Fun Network. And then, of course, the Maximum Fun Network does a big annual drive, just like NPR or PBS. Well, but in, in, in this show- in in particular, they have real costs, man. I mean, they're having to go out and do these things, and sometimes they have to buy equipment to to do them. They have to pay for sessions if they're doing like acupuncture. So their their cost to put on the show is probably on the higher side compared to most podcasts. I was really excited to listen to this show, and I had actually sampled one episode once before. When I first heard about it, this was six months ago or so, I listened to an episode about the Sikhs, I think which I had a friend in college that was a Sikh. And so I thought, oh, well, that'll be interesting to hear a different perspective on that. Um, and it was. It was a pretty interesting episode. But I didn't subscribe back then. So I gave it another try. This time I sampled the episodes about 9-11 truthers, about oil pulling, and breast and penis enlargement. Those were the three episodes I listened to. Okay, the episodes I listened to were exorcism, oil pulling, and dousing. Did they get exercised? No. Well, <laughs> right. Carrie did, yes. Okay. All right. Good. Suppose, what, listen yeah, to the we'll, episode. Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. Really, really interesting concept, first of all. Let's just talk about that first off. When you first heard of this idea or when you first understood what the show was about as you listened to the first episode, I'm, I'm not sure if you knew about it beforehand. Like, is it something that you thought you'd be into? Yeah. I, you know what? I'm just going to put this out here on the top. That's fine. Okay. There are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of things about this show that I understand that I should like. I like, I, I like the concept. I love the concept of the show. I don't like the show. 
<laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Not every show is for everybody. And one of the one of the reasons that we break the our show down the way that we do uh, into those four categories is because a lot of times you might listen to a show and you're like, every all of my friends say I should like this. I think I I hear what the show's about and I think yeah I should like this show and yet I'm listening to this and this is not for me and it's because it goes off the rails in one of those four areas generally for you I think maybe host likability is right off off the top where it goes. Oh yeah. What so why don't we start there? I was excited mostly about listening to the oil pulling episode you, you talked about the fact that like they have costs and stuff right this is something i had heard about and as crazy as it sounded and as unappealing as it sounded i have thought several times about giving it a try because of the vast number of benefits that are ascribed to it and the people that do it will like swear to you i've lost 30 pounds my well, skin fan- is clearer that's fanatics on anything i mean i, I guess so but i was so excited that somebody else was going to do it and then i could hear actual results so that was the first episode that I listened to and kind of my like reintroduction to these two voices and where I started. That was the second episode I listened to. By the time that I had gotten there, though, you had already sent me a text message talking about the fact that you kind of didn't like, in particular, you don't you don't care for Carrie. Yeah, and I grew to hate Ross. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Carrie. <laughs> a slow growing hate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carrie Poppy, uh, the female host, just right off the bat, she hits you crosswise. Did you have like an ex girlfriend named Carrie or something that we don't know about? What's, what, what was it that, that set you awry? Okay, so Ross is married. Carrie has a boyfriend. Right. I assumed going into this, these were like partners, like boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, that and they husband, were together. wife. Right. I see. And starting it off, I didn't know that Ross was married, and I didn't know that she had a boyfriend. So listening to it, I'm like, oh, man, this chick is just trying too hard. (laughs) And I still feel that way, but not because I thought she was trying to hook up with Ross. She just is annoying. You just for whatever reason just scratches the like. It's like the little kid. It's like you you remember the old cartoon with the. uh, with the mice and the like, uh, there's a bigger mouse and the, he's like, "Get away from me, kid! You bother." <laughs> yeah, you're like, bothering me. <laughs> yes, I felt like the big mouse and she was little mouse, always bothering me. Get away from me, Carrie! You bothering yes. me. Yes. All right, uh, fair enough. I I like both of them. Truthfully, here's here's where nobody I'll- nobody is as Mayberry <laughs> as Ross. There's not. There's nobody as Mayberry and wholesome as this guy. Seems to be. Well, you were talking about this. So first of all, I guess I should point out, this is an explicit show. They do occasionally curse. And in a couple of episodes, like in particular in the breast enlargement and penis enlargement episode, like they talk about some subject matter you probably wouldn't want to have your kids in the car for or whatever. But in general, it's a fact-finding show. You wouldn't think about it being dirty. Carrie does let her language fly, which is why it's explicit. She doesn't censor herself and they don't edit them out. Yeah, but it's not gratuitous. No, no, no. She just, when she feels like saying an F-bomb, she drops an F-bomb. And Ross almost never. Yeah, I, I don't. can't think of it. Once you pointed it out, I don't remember hearing yeah. him ever curse. And as a matter of fact, a couple of times I remember him saying something almost or like, oh, let's keep it, you know, Let's get it back on topic or almost being embarrassed at whatever it was that she was alluding to. I was going to say that he's a little anal. Like he is thorough, I guess I should say. Like he's very ordered. It's every time. And I mean, I guess it makes perfect sense for him to do a show like this then. Because like when he's talking about his investigations, he's like, I wrote this chart and I kept it over 64 days. Oh, yeah. Carrie's yeah. like, yeah, I did it two or three times a yeah. week and I thought about it a little right, bit. Right, but that's a good part. That's a good thing to have in yes. a show. Oh, no. You would definitely want these two. Notice but- I didn't say that's a good part of this show. I said <laughs> this is a good thing to have in a show. <laughs> Here's the thing that, that rubbed me the wrong way about both of them, truthfully. And I don't know why any more in this podcast than another it, w- it kind of p- was pointed out to me. The show was full of moments where I thought, God, that is a first world problem. Oh, yeah, all the time. Like All the time. This is a very privileged audience show. And, and it, I mean, I guess all podcasting is, if you think about it, if you're a producer of a podcast or even someone who's listening to a podcast, it's likely that you're doing so on a device – even if you didn't specifically pay 600 bucks for, that costs six or $700 and you've got a $80 cell phone bill every month to listen to it on or whatever. Or you've got a $500 computer that you're listening to it on. I'm saying the people listening to it on the library PC with borrowed headphones are few and far between. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, I'm usually excited about the assignments that we have to listen to, the shows that we 
have even if you don't, out. even if you're not going to like the show, it's good to hear what somebody else does. This is the first time, man. It felt like work. <laughs> that bad, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, so th- I think we've covered host likability. Let's go into audio quality. Uh, this is not the worst professionally recorded show that I've heard or that I no, listened every, to. No, uh, the my only like it to me. It's a good concept. It could be a great. Just recast it. Well, and here's the thing. It's the kind of concept that will likely outlive Ross and Carrie when they decide to retire and do something else. Like, they don't have to be shunned off. Cause obviously, the fans of the show like them just fine. You and I are not necessarily the fans of the yeah, show. Yeah, no. And, I, hey, I completely get why this show is popular. I, under, I, 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 can, I can see how people can be fanatical about this show and very defensive of the host. Good on you. I'm glad you're listening. They're not for me. Here's what bothered me as far as audio quality goes. It, it's not the best recorded or produced show that I listen to as far as the profession, the ones that do it sort of for a living or at least for part of their living. And they're one of the only podcasts I listen to that mentions their producer by name in every single episode. They talk a lot about the fact that they have an, an independent, a third party, a producer. He doesn't talk on the show, but he – you would imagine is the one actively recording them. And then he's the one editing and putting it all together. Like if you got a guy, make it sound a little better. You know what I mean? It didn't bother me. I don't know. Anyway, that it tickled me a little bit like that, 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 that bothered me slightly. Let's move to production values, theme song in and out. That's about it. Yep. Yep. But which I love. No, absolutely. I, I like a show like that. Very streamlined. Uh, I love their theme song, by the way. It's like, it's a cute little do 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 do. You know, it's like, Fits the it's mood. like an NPR. Yes, theme song. it's very much an NPR yeah. theme song. You could you could very much see this show on a Saturday afternoon on your local NPR station. This again goes on to the producer. Like it strikes me as weird that they make such a big deal about him being there, and they have well, like what does he do? What does that dude get paid to do exactly? <laughs> Nothing. Give a thumbs up, man. Oh, he just oh, sounds good, guys. Next episode, let's go. That let's move to the content. So you don't like the hosts. You said it was work. Yeah. What about the show itself? Like, can it, can the concept rise above the hosts? The concept can, but it can't in the way that they choose to present that content. Okay. So generally, let's just take – we'll take the oil pulling. A perfect example since we both have okay. the context there. Right. So quickly, the idea of oil pulling is that you take – and there are three or four different kinds that are generally used, but it's like – sunflower oil, sesame oil, or coconut oil, you take a small amount, like a teaspoon, put it in your mouth before you brush your teeth in the morning, and you swish it around slowly, kind of lazily, uh, for 20 minutes or so. The idea is that this pulls out toxins and just generally makes your body better. Yep. Exactly what you just said. Could have been the entire show. <laughs> well, I mean, you would then want them to say how it actually worked when they did it. Like, there's right, another right. five exactly. minutes or so. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. <laughs> of course. That's what you listen for, Right. <laughs> but to have to listen to 20 minutes of the mouth feel and how gross it was to have the oil in their mouth just dragged <laughs> the show down. I mean, it drug the show into the ground. You know what's great about that, though? That's why a good podcaster, uh, a good podcatcher app will have a, a, a quick forward button for 15 seconds forward, and you could just skip through a conversation like that. Also, and then and then just the way they talk about things, so... They explain that you probably shouldn't spit it into the sink, right? The uh, yeah, because I mean, and anybody knows, like you, you're not supposed to pour, pour oil down the drain. Period. But he spit it in the sink. She would spit it in the drain while she showered, or would spit it in the toilet because that's used to poop. And they giggled <laughs> over that. <laughs> I just laughed over it too. It's funny. It's funny because I'm telling you, it's not funny. It's not in context. It's not funny. <laughs> well, I don't. I thought it was a little funny. I didn't laugh out loud when they said it in the show, I don't and think. And terrible sex puns, man, set these guys <laughs> off. Well, I, see, I think that's the <laughs> I think that's the interplay. I think the fact that Carrie is a little bit, uh, you know, more raw on those sorts of things, and Ross is more reserved for but whatever reason. But it's so reason. not raw, though. Well, maybe they're playing it up. Maybe, maybe that's part of the shtick. I'm, I'm a little defending now. I'm a little fine. walking it back. That's fine. And then to know that this – first off, I'm sorry. You don't have a drinking game. <laughs> you do not – if there's 13 rules – 
to a drinking game, not a drinking game does that make. Uh, the drinking game was mentioned in the oil pulling episode too. Through that? the whole episode, they mentioned. It. Oh, oh, that's right. That was the running gag. That, well, because they had just gotten the idea from one of their listeners or whatever, and so the the gag was in that episode. They did all of them. I can't keep up with. I can't keep up with all that. Like, if they do something, if they do, if they have three ticks, right? Three things that they do over and over. Right. There you go. Boom. Drinking game. I don't need two and a half pages. To remember how to play this game. Well, the beauty is, you if they had a producer, then they could cut out all the ticks and you wouldn't have that problem. That's what happens on this show. I, I try to cut out the vast majority of our ticks on this show so that we don't uh, we aren't exposed uh, like that. I wish. Like, we you want to know what a good drinking game for a Kevin Smith podcast is? <laughs> all right, what? If you hear a lighter strike drink yes. game over, that's it. You got a good drinking game. You'd be pretty loaded. That's that's a true story. Here was my thing as far as the the content itself goes. Oh, like, and Ross, I think he's a hidden racist, man. Why do you say that? Okay. <laughs> so, in the oil pulling episode, all right. Toward the end, he's like, "Yeah, you can chew on sun. No, it was it sunflower seeds. The sesame seeds. Sesame seeds. You chew on the sesame seeds. You make, you make like a pulp, pulp and it whitens your teeth. Yes. And she does it, and she spits it in the trash can. And it's like, hey, look at this. But the way he chose to describe it was, man, that looks like the rice pudding served at the end of an Indian meal. But have you How seen, insensitive. Have you seen the rice pudding served at the end of an Indian sure. meal? Sure. Would I ever describe it that way? <laughs> if he was, if, if his co-host was an Indian co-host. Have you chewed up, have you recently chewed up a mouthful of sesame seeds and spit it out in a trash can to see what it looks like? That's I bet it point. looks exactly That's like that. That's not the point. <laughs> I'm saying I think he accurately described it. That's my that's my point. Here's here's how I feel about the content. I think that my boss recently told me in my day job. My boss recently told me that uh, I was aggressively opposed to stupidity. <laughs> this show fits in well with that. Like it's all about. Okay, you heard that crazy thing. Well, let's see about that crazy thing that you heard so that the next time you don't just have to tell the person that's talking to you about it, I, that sounds crazy and I'm not interested in that. You can say, that doesn't work and here's why it doesn't work or here's how it doesn't work. or Stamping out ignorance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm all, I'm fully on board. The I love one the, thing, Again, I love the concept. I think it's a great concept. The one thing I will say, you know, occasionally they do religious episodes or like the, the quote-unquote cult episodes. Theoretically, those could offend somebody if you're a believer or, or if you've got family members that are a, a member of that well, religion and to or give, something. And to give an accurate view, it's not always only Ross and Carrie. They have experts on sometimes. In those, show, in those shows, I, I have found that I like better. So there you go. That's the real answer. They need guests more. They need like a, a longer interview segment and less just them. Yeah. If you're the kind of person who watches like The Secrets of the Masons or like marathons on the History Channel of, you know, ancient aliens and that kind of stuff, this show is a show you're probably going to like, I, I would imagine. Well, and you know the part of the show that I like the best? The end? Well, no, but it's real close to the end. <laughs> okay. When they rank things. Oh, I do really like the way that they define it. I do too. Like, uh, so at the end of the show, they how how creepy was this on a scale of one to ten? How and sexy they, was it? Yes. How harmful Expensive, was it? Expensive. Yeah. All those things. Um, and then they give an example of what is a one on that scale and what's, what's a ten a, on that yeah. scale. They're often similar, but they're always a little funny. What we like to do w- before we wrap up our show here is we like to give the show alternate names. Yeah. I would call it Crazy Stupid Podcast. Um, dude, I think they I think they almost nailed it. Uh, oh, no, Ross and Carrie? Right. They okay. just left a word out. All right. Oh, no, it's Ross and Carrie. <laughs> like if it was a show with rotating hosts on the yeah. weeks where they were on, you'd be like, oh, no. no. Yeah, yeah. It's Ross and Carrie. Um, so I think, I think they got real close. So you just change the, you change the punctuation at the end. Instead of an exclamation point, you make it, I don't know, like a... A sad face. <laughs> yeah, an emoticon. <laughs> How about you could call it testing chain letters? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, that that'll probably be one that they do. Yeah. May, well, I mean, like, I feel like that's mostly what. Let's they just do. start sending them chain letters, <laughs> and let's hope they work. Like they just end up with terrible luck. Or you could call it Ross, Carrie, and the Crazies. Uh, I got no excuses for Ross and Carrie. <laughs> 
All right. Did you have a favorite uh, moment? From and the- here's the tagline. Okay. I even came up with a tagline. All right. Okay. You ready for this? Yes. Oh, no. It's Ross and Carrie. What you expect to hear before and after waterboarding. <laughs> That's terrible. Did you have a favorite moment when you were done listening to your required episodes? Um, yeah, no, I did. I like, I like the, I do like the rankings. And so okay. on one episode, the creepiness ranking was a 10 was, so like a one was uh, a mother pushing her child in a stroller. So not creepy at all? Not creepy at all. Okay. A 10 would be you're babysitting a kid and you go up to tuck him in at night and you tell him the story and you tuck him in. And he says, are you going to tuck her in too? And when you're like, who are you talking about? He points behind you to the corner and says, her, she wants to be tucked in too. And whenever you look in the corner and you don't see anything and you turn back to the kid and his eyes are all black. <laughs> so that's a, that's a 10 that's on a the ten. creepiness scale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that, my, that's, that's, all, that's my favorite part of each show. My favorite moment was in the uh, breast and penis enlargement episode. Ross was firm <laughs> on the pronunciation of the word flaxid. He said Instead that of flaccid. Yes, he says that it, the the proper pronunciation is flaccid penis, and and Kerry was arguing with him. He says, no, no, no. You look it, the when the rules for the two C's in a row, if it's followed by an I or an E, the first C is hard. And he gave an, another example where that's the case. If it's followed by an O or a U, it's you know blah blah blah. It's a soft C. And he gave an example where that's the case. She whatever in use it's been blah 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 back and forth. And he responded this. It's flaccid penis. I'll say it correctly if I want to. This is a learning moment for people. (laughs) That was my favorite moment of the show. Uh, So before we wrap up today, we're going to give this show an overall rating out of a two possible earbuds. We can give it zero. We can give it one. We can give it two. Uh, Just like Siskel and Ebert gave it thumbs up, we're going to give it earbuds in. I say one and a half. I, I like most of what they're doing here. Occasionally they can rub you the wrong way. I think people that are interested in this sort of thing on TV or you know on the internet in general, I think they're going to love this style of podcast. It's a, it's a really good one for a lot of folks, I think. And it's shown so in their iTunes ratings. I'm sure it is great for a lot of folks. I'm not a lot of folks. So I give it a one and a half. You give it a... Here's how I do my rating. Oh, yeah, all right. A half an earbud is worse <laughs> Then no earbud. We do, because it's it's like showing you how little you care. I yes. care so little for you that I'm going to point it out and make it obvious that I'm marked here. I didn't forget right. to check the box. I checked it, and I checked it very little. But if I give it a half an earbud, it will give it a total of two earbuds. Which is no good for you? Which I don't particularly like. All right. You're going to break off the first quarter earbud? But I'm going to stick with it. All right. I'm going to say the show gets half an earbud from me. <laughs> All right. There you go. So that's for an overall ranking of two earbuds from the team here at Asterix. Pod on Pod. Asterix for the two earbuds from the team at Pod on Pod. Speaking of, you can find more at podonpod.com. You can find more from Ross and Carrie at onopodcast.com. Or, of course, look for them on the Maximum Fun Network in iTunes, et cetera, Stitcher, all over the place. Um, Thanks to everybody who's been tweeting about us on Twitter, following us on Facebook. Thanks to those who have submitted their podcast to be reviewed. A ton of support. Yeah. Not not just from listeners, but from the podcast community. And it's been nice. Well, and that's what's really cool is like hearing other podcasters come out and say, hey, I've been listening to the show and it's really cool. And we've had several point out, hey, I disagree with this or I disagree with that. Also... Here's a real here's a moment for a correction. We we've been corrected. UCB, as discussed in the very first review of Doug Loves Movies, mm-hmm. is where they host their show. I said it was Cal Berkeley. You didn't correct me. I didn't because I thought maybe I was wrong. Yeah. The the real answer is what you originally imagined it was. It's the Upright Citizens Brigade. Right. And I should have known that. Here's the thing, and this is my own ignorance. I imagined the Upright Citizens Brigade. Their theater was a. I knew that was the name of the troupe. I thought their theater was named something else. I'm an idiot, but I've been corrected, and I appreciate you. Thanks to everybody who's been listening to the show. The downloads, uh, the support has all been really, really uh, well. It's been humbling. We'll keep reviewing though, and keep uh, bringing new episodes to you, bringing new podcasts to you, all at PodOnPod.com through our friends at TeamProcreate.com. You got anything? Yeah, this show is for the listeners. So the more feedback we get, the better we can tailor this show to you guys. Absolutely. Tell us if there's uh, a show that you 
you want us to review, if there's a kind of genre that we haven't hit yet. And something else that we're thinking about doing, and this is a great idea from you, we're going to do some specials, I think, over yeah. the summer, uh, maybe headed into the fall, where in one episode, we'll listen to and review three or four different shows about us the similar topic. Hey, here's three or sh- three podcasts about Game of Thrones. Or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ex- exactly. And here's th- what we liked about each different one. Here's th- our favorite of the three. We're going to do some of that soon. If you've got a, a topic that you'd like us to check out, just uh, email us. Podonpod at iCloud.com. And so until next week, I'm Joel. I'm Josh. And we are not Ross and Carrie. Word. <laughs> Pod on Pod is a proud member of the Procast Network, a Procreate production. Procreate is a community of artists in film, music, the digital arts, and fine arts that helps connect and collaborate on projects. You can find out more at www.teamprocreate.com. For more great podcasts from the Procast Network, try Movie Buzzed. Join your host, Zach, every episode on the Movie Buzzed podcast for good friends, a good movie, and a great buzz. The Pod on Pod theme song is written and performed by Adam Dale. Find his music in iTunes and more information about him on our website. Our musical guest this week is Ryan Mullaney, and you can find more information about them in the description. Would you lie?